Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm checking my volumes even though Mr. B does not like it when I do so. Um, I got Brad Combs on the phone because he had an important XRP Las Vegas update. Here it goes. Okay, I've got Brad Combs who is doing XRP Las Vegas and he wanted to give me an update that everybody needs to know. Well, DAI, thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, I just finished my last videos a little while ago for the day to day but I had a phone call meeting with the with the property MGM brand and first of all these people are so amazing to work with I just absolutely love it um, and them um, but I have to say you know I'm a little fearful because you know we're, we're getting tight on space that's the long and short of it and you know we're trying to negotiate to get a little more floor space so we can continue to sell tickets but we're very concerned that we may have to stop selling tickets because of the you know running out of room issue if we're not able to get a bigger room or more expansive room and that's all going to depend on what other events are happening around us so if you haven't got a ticket to xrp las vegas this is not to be a hypist or anything but this is a very real issue that happens vegas is a big city and there's a lot of things going on in that town dai and if people are going to get a ticket they better get it yeah. soon and it's just general admission left you've already sold out of vip right yes you're correct yeah vip sold out a few weeks ago and you know uh just this is our only our second year but i have to say you know that trend happened last year too we sold out with vip first and then we sold out with general admission and now we're up against it fighting for the space out here so uh, i i don't want to see anybody not get a ticket if you were thinking about going you were on the fence or you're like you know but maybe when it gets closer you might not get that opportunity, so I don't want to see that happen. So make sure you get your ticket to XRP Las Vegas. All right. And uh, last year you were having to turn people away, weren't, weren't you? This is what you're trying to prevent. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And, I mean, we actually even had people come to the property last year trying to get a ticket. And it just broke our heart because we didn't, I don't want to see anybody not be able to come and enjoy everything that we've done well, it's because, a, you know, this. It, 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 didn't you say it was a fire code issue that you ran into last year? It was a fire code issue last year and it was really intense and, there, and kudos to them for being super professional and very safe. Um, but it is a very big issue out there and you've got to be right on the number they will not allow anything over so right. this is that issue happening again okay cool thanks for the update all right there we go this is where they're doing it by the way well did i lose the let's see here i thought i had it on the website there it is that's where the conference is going to be held in that mgm conference center okay check this out here's an oldie but goodie from S smoke with a q um i like the idea of a gold standard i mean it could be used in a very um cryptocurrency way the point is do you have a unified money system so that when you talk about the international marketplace everyone is playing on a level monetary playing field and and it's very important to have a rules-based approach and that's why i'm adding I also like this, The World is a Stage. Apparently, a new Joker movie is coming out. Trailer coming on 4-9. The World is a Stage. Imagine that. And I think this, uh, this must have been put out by one of the uh, Riddler type people um, back 1-20-23. And this is uh, today, I guess. All right, interesting stuff. Okay, I uh, wanted you to see this because when I think of Bitcoin being a Trojan horse, this is not the way I think of it, but this is a different take than what I've heard. 
this is obviously a trick. This is obviously a trick. Um, but they were like dispatched and ignored because the horse was like, it was just like so badass. So the, the Trojans were like bringing it in the city. So they brought it in themselves. No blood spilled at all, right? In the middle of the night, of course, we, what you realize is the horse was packed with Greek soldiers and they come out and they let the army in, which was like hiding behind an island. So this idea that like something could be so attractive that you really can't say no, even if you know what's inside of it, is it played with, in Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. So like, in Bitcoin has this number go up technology, right? It is what we call it in, in sort of shorthand, NGO, NGU, right? But what people don't realize is that NGU is like the Trojan yeah. horse. Inside yeah. the Trojan horse is FGU, freedom go up technology. So dictators and rogue regimes and corporations oh. are gonna buy, mine, tax, accumulate this thing because it's the best performing financial asset in the world. What they don't realize or they're gonna have to ignore is that they're also aiding and abetting this freedom technology which allows individuals to be sovereign and eventually erodes their power. There's no question that rogue regimes and bad actors have already used and will continue to use Bitcoin. The thing is when you think about a North Korea or a Venezuela and that government instructs some of its bureaucrats and cronies and officials to start stealing Bitcoin or accumulating it or whatever for short-term gain to get around sanctions and, and use it to buy dollars or something like that, right? Which they can't get normally. Well, guess what? All those people who the regime has instructed to like figure this thing out and use it, they're all gonna realize, oh my God, this is money the government doesn't control and it's gonna spread like a virus, okay? So this is like the idea of the Trojan horse allegory. Why well, I think it's so important and powerful with Bitcoin. All the people talking about Bitcoin today on TV, they don't care about freedom or privacy. They just care about number go up. But what they don't realize is what's concealed within. And that's very, very powerful to me. See, he looks at this totally different than I do. Oh, I think it's a Trojan horse, all right. But he just, he just outlined his premise, which is that somehow all of the money people are being fooled by this thing. And it's going to, out of their own greed, they're, they're getting involved in all of this. And then they're, gonna, they're in, in essence, being tricked because Bitcoin is then going to be this freedom thing and they weren't counting on that i think that's the biggest load of bs i've ever heard in my life these people know who the four satoshis are they're not taking black you think blackrock think this through folk think about how much risk blackrock would have if they put their customers in this thing not knowing who the four satoshis are there's no way on this green earth that they would do it, and neither would MicroStrategy, folks. And that's the dirty little secret. I'm just amazed that this guy thinks that is the way Bitcoin's a Trojan horse. My my 11-year-old uh, might think that's the reason Bitcoin's a Trojan horse. U.S. government Tuesday morning moved 30K Silk Road Bitcoin to what's reported to be a Coinbase wallet. Boring Sleuth came in and corrected the record on this. Even Coindesk can't read the blockchain. Only 2,000 went there, Coindesk. So he's, he's actually looked at the blockchain. Interesting. Finally, someone is saying the truth. That these people need to go to prison. Pled guilty. And I'm not just talking about the FTX people. I'm thinking ETH gate too while he's he talking. Testified against him. Dennis Keller joins us now. Dennis, maybe let's expand here for a moment on how you feel about the co-conspirators in what had happened with FTX. Even though that many of them had come forward early on, testified to a significant degree, why should they face greater penalties in your view? Well, I'm, I'm not saying they should face greater penalties. I'm saying that they should be severely punished but they should also be seriously rewarded for their cooperation. They materially helped the prosecution, they testified truthfully, and they facilitated the conviction and sentencing of who was the core kingpin here, Sam Bankman Freed. So I'm not in any way suggesting they shouldn't get leniency for what they've done. They definitely should, but they should also see a period of time behind jail bars. White collar criminals have to understand that they can't get a pass. We can't only be throwing crooks, white collar, I mean, blue collar street criminals in prison. The message has to be sent mm. to white collar criminals, not just the kingpins, but their enablers, that they need to go to jail for at least some period of time, as well as, by the way, they should be barred from the financial industry for life. Hmm. So, Dennis. Yeah, the Enron guys had to go to jail. What about all these other people? 
Oh, speaking of uh, shady, <laughs> here is uh, this breezy guy, XRP Breezy, had put this out. This is Laura Shin, and they're talking about whether, you know, what the SEC could potentially do to, to Ethereum. And he says the real reason why the SEC should be going after Ethereum is ETHgate. In other news, here are some screenshots of paid screenshots of paid Ethereum shill Laura Shin's XRP FUD post. See, this is Laura Shin, all these negative XRP posts while she was um, propping up Ethereum, writing all writing books about Ethereum. Never ever did she question anything about the disguised whales never even went there um and then she says i believe this is the first time i've ever seen someone from the sec say clearly that eth is not is currently not a security and mike Novogratz says it's a big deal yes the next question are whether all icos were securities offering or if, if that will be the case case by case determine how uh da, 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 and what they'll do about xrp xrp was immediately on their brains folks this is not an accident right here. Not an accident. Now, Hester Pierce went to the microphone and literally, in, 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 I think Gary Gensler was sitting there. This was at their, uh, I can't remember the name of their thing, some annual conference they do. And Gary's there listening to this. Interrupt. Just think about how embarrassing this is for the United States of America. That This is one of our agencies whose number one mission is to protect individual investors. I give you the Gary Gensler SEC. ...with a regulator like the SEC are never stress-free, but the come in and talk to us mantra was, was a real invitation to have a genuine conversation about difficult issues. Productive interactions with the SEC these days are fewer and further between. When individuals and entities come to the SEC with their novel ideas, their feedback, their concerns, their objections, their questions about implementation of a new rule or application of an old one to new circumstances, too often they're met with crickets. Neither staff expertise nor issues ripe for analysis are lacking, so what has changed? In the past, the staff, uh, in, in part, I think it's because the staff is, is run ragged by the rule writing agenda, right? So there's just, there's not a lot of bandwidth to think about these difficult issues. Remote work may also play a role. It's more difficult for staffers to spontaneously discuss with one another these difficult issues. But the root of the problem is that the commission discourages the staff from offering much more than shrugs, silence, slow walking, sighs. The culture at the top of the SEC has changed and that has led to a change across the whole agency in the way we interact with the public. Countless people have told me that they used to feel comfortable coming in and talking to us, but no more. When it comes to interpretive guidance, the commission is closed for business. New, products, new product ideas, not now, maybe later. Approval to uh, do things for which other firms already have approvals, Oh, that was very limited. Uh, the circumstances there was very, the, for the permission there were very limited. Feedback on how a new, um, on how, how a particular set of facts interacts with a new rule, we can't provide you with legal advice. Interactions that do occur are often interminable rounds of unproductive interactions before an unresponsive audience. Even processes that historically have been straightforward, such as filing for new funds, have become complicated. The registration process too often involves unpredictable timelines, inconsistent comments, and an unprecedented lack of transparency. A, spun, a fund sponsor might receive dozens of comments on a filing for a fund, where the only distinction from a prior fund is the asset class underlying it. Product ideas are abandoned before they're submitted to the commission staff for consideration or after years have produced nothing but large legal bills and diminished trust in the commission. Some perceived meeting with the commission is not only unproductive but inadvisable. People have told me that they will only talk to me uh, with lawyers or they've said that they're you know, meeting with me against the advice of counsel. Um, people worry that the inevitable result of meeting with the commission is just going to be an enforcement action. 
Folks, there's only one logical conclusion here. Gary Gensler was sent to kill the industry. That's the only, only person that would behave this way is somebody whose job it was to kill the industry. Period. All right, now, let's not forget what got us here. Now, what I did is, uh, this was the censored video, not just this clip, but there was a, the, I had put out a part of the Lowell Ness video, and then, um, and this was when Steven Narioff first appeared in social media. At the same time, my ex account got turned off. A few days after I put out the video of Lowell Ness, Steven Narioff came in, retweeted it, and that's when he entered stage left, okay? And my account got turned off within a few days, okay? Well, then it was brought to my attention that that video had been censored on, well, I'll show you, here it is. It had been censored, this is the actual tweet. It had been censored on the X platform. <clears throat> so watch this. What the uh, Hinman speech, which tracks my memo pretty well. Let me see where the Full thing. decentral. Ooh, it looks like they changed it now. Earlier this morning, you couldn't watch this, okay? And this wasn't it wasn't uh, my imagination. Like, if you hit the refresh, it's like this thing was programmed. Full Let's see if it does it again. And that's what the Hinman speech, which tracks my memo pretty well, has has come out and said. And the uh, they they're, now they're letting it play. They weren't letting it play earlier. So what I did is I put this out and I said X has censored this. And I want you to listen to this, and then I'll talk about my translation. Has come out and said Ethereum's not where Bill has has come out and said Ethereum's not currently. And and here's the here's the right way to say it. It's not about the token. The token is never a security. None of these tokens are ever securities. But don't think that gets you anywhere because it's really the transaction that matters. And so the way if you read Bill's speech, it, it's really it carefully goes through and very carefully says thus the offer and sale of the token of Bitcoin and of Ether today does not constitute the offer and sale of a security. In other words, there's no investment contract formed because there's no, a person, one person selling Bitcoin to another is not creating an expectation of profits on, on some issuer's efforts. So, um, so the current secondary trading is not a securities violation is really what he's saying. Um, but that he left open, you know, even in Bitcoin's case, whether maybe the original primary offering might have been a securities law violation. So, so they knew that both Bitcoin and Ethereum, when they were offered, were securities transactions. They knew that. All they did, Bill Hinman went out there and he gave this speech for a very specific purpose, and that purpose was to give the, get those two in this vague speech give those to this vague regulatory clarity then let enough money over time go into those two to where it would hurt too many people for bitcoin and ethereum to be gone after by the sec that was what they wanted to try to create a monopoly the irony is that ripple had to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to get the exact same clarity that bitcoin and ethereum got for free this was not an accident folks this was a monopoly attempt and the, here's the other irony of this thing. The whole industry was against Ripple and XRP to start with. By the time we got done with ETHgate, they didn't even realize it at the time and they don't want to admit it now. But a combination of Ripple, John Deaton, and the XRP army literally saved all of the rest of crypto and they didn't even know we were saving them and wouldn't like to admit it now, but we did. And that's the fact, Jack. Now. In DAIXRP.com, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you why I think these things are being censored. So far, we've caught them censoring uh, two things. Comex 589 videos and this video with Lowell Ness where he describes how ETHgate unfolded. What I, I went and, and made sure I downloaded the full video so that I've got it. And, but I'm in, in DAIXRP.com, I'm going to tell you about what I think is going on at X and why I think. It, it, remember, this video, when I put this out, this is when my X account got turned off. 
So I'm going to talk, talk to you in the group about, because I don't feel comfortable out here. I'm going to tell you what I think is really going on and how these things are getting censored and why they're doing it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family, here we go.